Hey, what's up everybody? Bro man here, got another video for you. This time flying out the P-47M on Krimsk against the Russians uh, with my brother who is also flying the P-47M. Um, got a, I've got some nice gameplay uh, here for you. I think that uh, hopefully you'll be able to enjoy. Um, it's got some nice uh, cooperative squad tactic gameplay in it that hopefully you'll be able to learn from and, and use yourself in any uh, matches that you get into. Um, admittedly, this isn't so easy uh, to do when you're flying solo, uh, and that's largely due to the fact that you can't really communicate uh, efficiently with your teammates, but, you know, if you can still employ some of these tactics, uh, and a lot of it relies on reacting to your team. I mean, it takes two, obviously. If they're not reacting well to you, it doesn't always uh, lead to success, even if you are adequately reacting to what they're doing. But um, it, it can help you. You know, It doesn't hurt to, to, to pay attention to what your, your team's doing and to, to react to them. Um, but anyways, let's get into the match here. Um, that first uh, attack there you saw on the Act 3 was nothing too uh, advanced. Just a dive. Boom and zoom. On the Act 3, I got some hits into him, took out his tail control, or, or so it told me in the match, and he flies away, and I never see him again. I don't get credit for the kill, but he ends up dying somehow, and uh, he doesn't return to the fight, so. Um, that leaves me and my brother so far um, attacking this I-185. He's, he's up there diving on the I-185, and I'm kind of hanging up high, keeping an eye out for other fighters flying top cover. And um, before my attack on the Yak-3, I remember seeing um, an LA-9 and a Yak-9 chasing a friendly target. And I no longer see that friendly target. <laughs> so something tells me that he's been exterminated. So I call out to my brother, hey, watch out, be careful. I don't see those, uh, those two enemy planes and they're probably gaining some altitude on us. One's an LA-9 and I definitely do not want to uh, get caught at an energy disadvantage against an LA-9. So. We both reverse to go looking for these two. That I-185 is too low now. He's out of the picture. And I actually think my brother ended up uh, doing enough damage to him that he died. Uh, he, ended up, he ended up flying headfirst into the ground. So sure enough, here we go. We turn around, and here's our Yak-9 and our LA-9, just about at our altitude, um, flying towards us for a fight here. I'm not too worried about the Yak-9. It looks like I've got more than enough energy to, to be safe with him. It's this LA-9 that I'm more worried about. He looks like he's more on my altitude, more on my energy level. Um, so I level out, pick up some speed, go for a high-speed merge here. Um, sure enough, he takes the bait, as always, goes for a high-speed reversal, throws away some of his energy, um, and I end up being okay, safe, uh, and able to outrun him. So um, now I go into my sort of dragon bag uh, tactics here, dragging the opponent for my brother who's coming in, um, try to set this kill up for him, I go up into a climb, if the LA-9 chases me, that's going to put him in perfect position for my brother to pluck him right out of the air, uh, he doesn't though, and uh, he, he dives away from my brother, um, so this is a part where I kind of make a mistake, uh, I see this Yak-9 here, and I know he's going to be a threat to my brother, but I'm not exactly sure who he's going for here. Um, I react a little too late. I should have gone for the attack there because I'm pretty sure he was uh, tunnel vision on my brother. That would have been the perfect kill for me. Um, would have been an easy setup, but uh, I end up reacting to it um, a little too late, and I can't get my guns on him. So I zoom out of the, uh, the attack there, go for a kind of a high yo-yo reversal uh, to turn back on this guy. Um, my brother had more than enough energy to get out of out of his sights. He's more than safe, so nothing to worry about there. But uh, I've got a nice setup to finish him up here, dive down. He goes for a hard turn. Not well enough. I put a lot of shots into him, and I damage him enough that he ends up bailing out. And uh, that's the Yak-9 out of the fight. So now it's a 2 versus 2. Uh, us versus the two LA-9s. Very scary planes uh, to have to deal with. But I think we have the advantage that we are uh, communicating pretty well here. Um, so we go for the lowest one over here. That other one's pretty far out. Um, and we're just going to uh, 
basically play whack-a-mole here until one of them makes a mistake. Um, my brother gets in a nice position over this uh, first LA-9, and he goes for a, a dive on him. I'm going to climb up over the top um, to provide uh, top cover in case something happens. You know, he overshoots and he needs me to dive down and help him. But also because I know this other LA-9 is over here, I want to keep an eye on him. So my brother dives down. Um, he can't quite get the kill. He overshoots, but he's uh, got more than enough speed to escape this bottom LA-9. I look up and see the top LA-9 flying at us, and this is where we kind of start overwhelming this guy's um, situational awareness. He's got two, two choices to make here. One, he either aims for me in a head-on uh, to, to thwart me, which leaves him open to my brother's attack, or he aims for my brother, which leaves him open to attack from me. Um, it turns out he ends up uh, going for me and then sort of going for some uh, evasive maneuver a little too late. My brother's got more than enough energy to climb up to him and, uh, and takes him out of the sky there. So um, that's kind of perfectly executed teamwork there, I think. Um, overwhelming that guy's situational awareness, he can't react well enough uh, to both of us attacking at the same time. So now we're left in a 2v1 um, with plenty of energy over the last guy. Now we're going to start some um, cooperative boom and zoom here. At this point, it's important that we really, uh, we really overload this guy's situational awareness. Um, we're both going to be coming at him at different angles, one right after the other, so we're going to be aggressive in our turns here. Notice I'm not trying to conserve energy here. I'm pulling hard on the stick, looping around as fast as I can to get on him. That's because my brother's diving down right now. As soon as he gets done with his attack, I, I want to be as close to immediately as possible diving down on him after after his attack. So he's got to, he's got to react to my brother, then immediately to me. My brother's going to pull out of his uh, dive here. He's going to go into a sharp turn. He's pulling up. I'm diving down. As soon as um, my attack is finished, my brother's going to be pulling around hard, diving down on him immediately after, just one right after the other, hammering this guy as hard as we can. We don't want to give him any opportunity to react here. We need him to make a mistake. The, the minute he loses um, he, he loses uh, contact with one of us, that's when the mistake is made, and, and this is what happens right here. He tunnel visions on me, and uh, he's an easy target for my brother there. Just like that, just really hammer it home there. So um, I think that's some... Uh, more flawless uh, team play there, I think. Excellent job by my brother. We did a really great job, um, I think. So, um, that's pretty much it for this fight. Uh, not a lot else happens. There's one more bomber that we have to take out. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and let the video play through on that kill. It's nothing spectacular. It's actually kind of funny. I mean, we make some mistakes, even, so it's really not uh, worth watching per se, but I, I do have some things I want to talk about while it's um, playing in the background. I've recently had some discussions with um, people, primarily on the forums, uh, the War Thunder forums, who tend to think that Boom and Zoom is obsolete, and you're better off, uh, you're better off flying a plane that's very maneuverable or it has really good climb rate and acceleration or, or you know whatever that they're they're just by default better than boom and zoom because uh, you know their their thinking is if you if you've got five random people in American planes versus five uh, random people in like Japanese planes I don't know zeros and high 43s and whatnot those other planes are they're just better and so they're gonna have an advantage um, and I think the reason that is is because people they f they f they fly this game they, f they play this game they fly their planes with a sort of solo mentality like they're only out there for themselves they've got to get as many kills as they can um, they, they they fly with almost no teamwork um, and you can't fly American planes like that like obviously if you fly something like a P-47 without some sort of teamwork mentality, then yeah, you're, you're not going to do well because teamwork is where these planes excel. And I understand that it's, it's more difficult to use teamwork 
efficiently when you're not uh, in, in a squad with them and you're not using some voice chat service. Um, but it doesn't mean that you don't, you, you can't still fly with some teamwork, right? It's as simple as just watching what your teammates do and reacting to them. If you, if you see a teammate diving down on a target, you know, you don't have to fight them for the kill. You can, you know, stay up high, fly top cover for them. Um, and cover their six, you know, if they overshoot, well, okay, now you can dive down and clear their six for them. If there's other planes that are flying into the match, like, don't, don't ignore those planes to get the easy target that's down low, you know, cover your, cover your teammates six o'clock from the, from these other planes that are, that are coming into the fight, right? Um, and I don't think a lot of people do that, and, or, or they'll, what I see happening most often is that people will take a situation where it's five versus five and they turn it into five one versus ones right where they just tunnel vision on their target they don't pay any attention to anything else that's going on around them and that's how they end up losing right you, of course if you get into a one versus one with any u.s plane you're not gonna do well um, just because they're they're just not the best one versus one planes they fly the best with uh, teamwork, and I don't know, I think if people would just get out of that solo player mentality, um, they would have a lot more success with uh, American players. Anyways, uh, off of my soapbox, um, I have, uh, I linked some more videos in the description down below. Uh, this is a guy who I watched a long time ago, uh, it taught me the very basics of, um, of what I know. He, he, this guy is the foundation of uh, what I know. And he does an excellent job of illustrating the kinds of tactics that I'm talking about and, and how you can work together with another player to, uh, to uh, overcome a situation. Um, so uh, it, it's not War Thunder and, and they're older videos and it's from an older game called Rise of Flight and it's about biplanes. Um, but I think it doesn't matter what planes he's flying or what game he's flying. The tactics translate perfectly well from that game to this one, from biplanes to P-47s. So, uh, go give it a watch. Uh, leave him a like, a thumbs up, whatever. Um, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed his video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and I'll catch you in the next one.